Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video we're going to build the car assembly. If you were able to follow along in the past few videos, you should have created the car project and imported all the additional components, and then built the chassis base, motor mount, and sidewall component. If any of these parts are missing, be sure to go back and check the videos to make sure you didn't miss any steps. Okay, to start, we're going to create a new design. If you've used another CAD program like SOLIDWORKS or Inventor, Fusion 360's way of handling assemblies might be a little bit foreign to you. Basically, assemblies and parts have no distinction in Fusion 360. Everything is just done in kind of these design workspaces. And you can build a part inside the workspace, or you can bring in other parts, or you can even make multiple parts within a given workspace and make them into components. The way we're going to do this is we're going to call this workspace our car assembly, and then we're going to drag parts that we've created in other workspace into this assembly. Uh, I'll show you how that goes. So before we can bring any additional parts into this workspace, we need to save. So we're going to save this in the root of our car project, and we're just going to call this car assembly. Go ahead and save it. And now that we've got this saved, we can actually click and drag parts from our data panel here in our custom parts folder into the workspace. So we're going to start with the chassis base. So click and drag it in. It might take a second to load, and then it'll place it into this workspace. So right now, we just want to press OK over here on the move copy. That's good. And you can see this little chain here next to the chassis base. That means that it's linked to the chassis base the part over here. So if we made a change and saved it in this part over here, it would update in our assembly. Currently, this part is not fixed. It can move around if we click and drag it. Uh, we're going to revert that real quick. Uh, in order to fix that, we want to ground the first part in any of our assemblies. So what essentially that does is it fixes it in place at the origin and essentially means that you can no longer click and drag around. Uh, this is a good thing to do with any of the first part or subassembly you drag into um, just so that the entire assembly is fixed. Okay, so this is the chassis base and we're going to uh, add a few of our subassemblies now. So go back to the car project into subassemblies. And the first subassembly that we're going to insert is the gearbox. So once again, click and drag. So this is another design workspace that I've created and already built all the joints within that. And you can basically have as many layers as you want of subassemblies inside subassemblies. Okay, so we're just going to click and drag this a little bit out of the way so that we can make our joints. Um, so right here is fine. So press OK. Okay, so now to join these two components together, we're going to use what is called a joint. Uh, if you've used another CAD software before, you might be familiar with uh, joining parts and assemblies through constraints. Um, joints are similar to constraints, uh, except for that they work by constraining all of the degrees of freedom um, with one joint, essentially. So any given part in 3D space has six degrees of freedom. That's three translations and three rotations. So you can move in the X direction, the Y direction, and the Z direction, or you can rotate about the X axis, rotate about the Y axis, or rotate about the Z axis. So when we're joining two parts together, what we're essentially doing is we're limiting those degrees of freedom. So to create a joint, go up here to the assemble uh, tab in the um, tool bar here and press joint and all the joints that we're going to create in this assembly are what is known as rigid joints so those fix all six degrees of freedom with two selections essentially one from each component that you're creating the joint between you can also create motion joints um, such as a revolute or slider um, there are tons of great videos out there on how those work, and I'd suggest if you're interested in creating moving joints to look into those. But right now we're going to start with just rigid joints, which, like I said, 
um, fix all six degrees of freedom with a single joint. Okay, so we're going to start with our component one, which is our gearbox over here. And we're going to select the bottom of this bolt hole right here. The reason that we're selecting the bottom and not the top is because what this joint is going to do is it's going to essentially lock this edge to the corresponding edge on our chassis base over here. So if I press those two, you can see that it moves the gearbox into place and all the joint all the bolt holes line up, which is what we want. And this will essentially fix this component in place in all six directions. Three translations, three rotations. So this part will be fully fixed by basically gluing those two edges together. So we can press OK. Uh, the rest of the parts will kind of update. You can see I can no longer move this part around. It is fixed. OK, so that's one joint. Um, so that's just fixing basically two edges of a circle together. So you can see even though these circles are not the same size, it's actually joining the center of the circles together. So it's an important thing to note. So uh, if you've got bolt holes or anything else, the, the screw holes don't need to be the same on both components in order for it to work. It'll basically uh, make the two circles concentric. Okay. So the next thing we're going to insert is the electronics assembly. Go ahead and click and drag it from the subassemblies folder again. It'll take a second because it's a little bit larger assembly. Okay, and then we're going to drag it out of the way like we did before. And you can either rotate it now to be in the correct orientation or do that when you do the joint. So I'll show you right now how to do it when you do the joint. So we'll just keep it as is right there. Press OK. And then we're going to create a joint again. We're going to use this hole over here. So the corresponding hole on this component would be right here. Select that edge. So selecting the right, it's called a joint handle, is really important in Fusion 360. And it'll take a little bit of time to get used to. But um, where you select on the part is really important. So you can kind of select the inside face. And that would also work for this. I like to select the edge just because it's a little bit more clear. Um, you can select the center of a face or like one of the edges of a face, all those types of things. Getting used to selecting the right joints will take a little bit of time, but um, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple. Okay, so you can see this moved this part over here, but currently it's still in the wrong orientation. So in another software, what you might do is you might create another uh, constraint between this hole here and this hole here. Um, but in Fusion, we're just going to rotate this part to be 90 degrees, which is what we know. You can see now that this lines up with this bolt hole. All of our bolt holes line up, which is good. So we can press OK. And the rest of the component will update. And now we've got our electronics in place. Okay. Now we're going to go back to our custom parts folder and we're going to insert the motor mount component. So again, we're just going to drag it out of the way so that we can see our bolt holes. Press OK. And it doesn't matter which hole you use, the only thing that matters is that this cutout is towards the right side of the assembly because that's where the um, leads for the motor is going to be. So select that edge there and this edge here. And again, we're going to rotate it. Oh, sorry, I selected the wrong edges. So you can see if you select the wrong edges like I did just then, um, you can unselect over here in the component too, and I can change it back to this edge, which should be the correct one and change my rotation to be 90 degrees. There you go. Now you can see all the bolt holes line up, which is good. Um, if any of the holes don't line up, make sure to check the sketches in your chassis base component and make sure that all the dimensions are correct. Okay. 
Um, if you ever needed to edit a joint, you can see here these joints show up uh, as little tooltips right here. Um, or you can actually go down in the timeline and find the correct or the corresponding joint for the component you're working on. Um, you can also hide those joints if you don't want to see them if you're working on a complicated assembly. Okay, the next component we're going to insert is the motor assembly, which is the DC motor and the pinion gear. So click and drag that in and move it out of the way so you can see it. It's on the way of the other parts. All right, and then we're going to line up the center of this kind of cylindrical face with the center of our motor mount. So select this edge and make sure the joint origin is in the center, not uh, on the edge like this. It should be in the center. Select that edge and then this edge. Same thing, make sure it's in the center, not on the edge. And you'll see here, this is the opposite direction of what we want. We want the motor to be uh, turned around, basically rotated. So we're going to fix that with a flip. So flip should move this um, joint origin. Basically, there's there's kind of two orientations that will satisfy that joint, and uh, sometimes it guesses wrong. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're actually going to offset this joint by two millimeters, just so that the pinion gear um, is lines up better with the gear in the gearbox. So just click this drag handle in the Z direction. You can also just change the number uh, on the joint kind of screen over here. Okay. So now you can see that the uh, there's some overlap between the pinion gear and this gear, which is what we want. Okay. So the next part we're going to insert is the sidewall. But before we can actually, um, here, so let's, so click and drag the sidewall part into the subassembly. Let's move it out of the way. Um, but currently we don't have a good way of inserting this component onto here. So we're gonna create our own joint origin. So to do that, just open this part up. Right, and then we're going to create a joint origin by going to assemble joint origin and we're actually going to create this at the origin of the part because that's where we want to we want to select the center of this hole but there's no good way of selecting kind of the center of this slot um, but luckily it's located at the origin so we can do it by just selecting the origin point here and you want to make sure that the um, joint origin is kind of facing up if it's not, you can reorient it by selecting the correct axis for it to uh, be oriented, but uh, the way it looks right now is correct. So that's what we want. You can also offset it in any direction if you needed to, but right there in the center is what we want. Um, that's kind of another reason that we built the part the way we did, centered at the origin. Okay, so we create this joint origin, but it won't actually show up in our car assembly yet. Um, and that's because we haven't saved the part. So no changes made to a part will show up in the assembly until you save. So I'll make a version description added joint origin. Okay. And then when you go back to your car assembly, you'll see this button up here which means that your one of your components is out of date, which we know because we just saved it. So select this button right here, and that will update the assembly. And you can see now we've got our joint origin there. So now we can create our joint. So we're gonna select that joint origin, and then the center of this face. So because this is not a hole, it's an actual face, the center of the face uh, is kind of a pre-made joint origin, which is what we want. Go ahead and select that. Um, but you can see it's not rotated correctly, so we need to fix that. You can also fix that by changing the joint origin, um, but it's easy enough to change the joint itself. So you can see all three of our rectangles line up, which is good. So we can press OK. And then we need to do the same thing on the other side.
Create a joint, select our joint origin, and then the center of this face. And then rotate this part 90 degrees. Okay. There we go. And that's the side wall assembled onto our car. Okay. Now we're going to insert the front axle. So go to your subassemblies folder, click and drag the front axle in. Move it out of the way. And then we're going to create a joint between the wheel. So create, select the edge of the wheel here, and then the edge of our sidewall here. And then we're going to change the angle to zero degrees and change the offset in the Z direction to one millimeter because there's a one millimeter gap on the edge. Select OK and you should see there's an even spacing on both sides of the car. And our front axle is in place. OK, now we need to do the rear axle. So this is pretty similar, uh, just need to make sure that the gear is on the right part or right side, which it should be automatically, but uh, just make sure you don't rotate it. So create a joint again, same thing on the wheel. And then onto the edge of the sidewall. And then a one millimeter gap in the Z direction and change the angle to zero degrees. Okay. And you should see that the gear lines up with the gear on our gear box, which is what we want. And this is pretty much the car assembly complete. Uh, the only other thing that you can add, and I'll leave this up to an exercise if you want to, is to add the nuts and bolts that actually bolt all these components down. Uh, so I'll show you how to do one, and then if you'd like, you can do the rest. So those parts are gonna be in hardware, and it's gonna be the um, black nut and bolt. It's uh, 117 and 001. So click and drag this in. And then Create a joint between the bottom face here, select this bottom edge, and then the top of any of our components right here. And then click and drag the nut in, same thing. And then make a joint using this edge here and the bottom edge of our chassis base right here. And in this case, we need to flip it. And there we go. That's bolt and nut in place. So when you finish all of the bolts, it should look like this. See, there's four for the motor mount, four for the electronics, and then three for the gearbox. Like I said, I'll leave that up to you to do on your own because it's very repetitive. Yeah, and then just go ahead and save the car assembly. And that should show up in the root of your car project. And that's how you make assemblies in Fusion 360. Thanks for watching.